not terribly difficult. All right, now this is a graph that's important to understand as well. Okay, this particular graph, um, you have it in your handout, talks about... Um, Oh, I this is colors. the heated up, break it up graph. The heated up, break it up graph. You saw this last year if you watched mm -hmm. all of those podcasts. But basically down here I have ice. This is for water. And then we have uh, melting ice. Ice and water are present right here. Mm -hmm. and, and this stage of the, gra of the graph I have just water. Here for water and steam. We just saw that a minute ago. And here we have steam. And this is just the heat versus the temperature. And this is at 273 Kelvin. This is 373 Kelvin or 0 and 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, so this is an important graph, um, and there's two important things um, that we need to talk about. Okay, actually, let's talk about a couple things on this graph. First of all, if you are on the sloping portions of this graph, like right here, you're going to use the equation Q is equal to mc delta t. If you are on the flat portions of the graph, use the equation Q is equal delta h f in this case times n for the moles. Okay, if you're in the just the water stage, you'll do M C delta T. By the way, M stands for mass. C is the specific heat, and delta T is the change in temperature. One other thing you want to watch out for is delta H is sometimes given in kilojoules per mole, sometimes given in kilojoules per yeah, gram. Actually, on this graph, it's kilojoules or calories per gram. Yeah, so be joules. careful. Just watch your units. If it's per gram, do it times the mass. If it's per mole, do it times the moles. That's exactly right. And this will be Q equals delta H V for vaporization times M or N, whichever um, unit you get. And the steam is M C delta T. You'll see, you've done these problems before. Yeah, so. one other thing, the uh, the flat parts of the graph are always given in kilojoules, the, yeah. the delta H's are. And when you do Q equals M C delta T, your answer shows up in joules. And when you add them all together, if you're calculating like the total amount of energy, be careful to make sure your units are consistent. All right, so now let's kind of review how to do this. So if I've got how many grams or how much energy is required to raise 7 grams of water from 50 to 100 degrees Celsius. Now, if you go back to that graph, you're just going from 50 degrees Celsius, which is about right here, to 100 degrees Celsius. So the equation that applies is just the mc delta t. So you do Q equals mc delta t. And we're working with water. That's C number. I'll explain that. This is so 7 grams. C is the specific heat. We've talked about this before, so I'm not going to belabor this. This is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius times the change in temperature from 50 degrees to 100 degrees. That is a 50 degree temperature change. And you get a total joulage of 1463, 1463 joules. Joulage, yeah. That's kind of a neat word. Yeah, or 1500 joules. All right. Yeah. All right, not too bad. This next one is kind of a nasty problem, but um, you might expect to see this on an AP exam. So let's just. You also do might it. expect to see it in your homework. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, you will. We're going to go from negative 50 to 150 degrees Celsius. Now, you always start with this graph. Actually, let me just sketch it here. We're starting down here at negative 50 degrees Celsius, and we're going to go up to 150 degrees Celsius. So we have to take some ice and we have to melt it. By the way, this is we're assuming that we live at sea level, and of course we don't. But oh well, too bad. Uh, zero to f uh, 50, negative 50 to zero, and then I have to go from zero to zero, and then I have to go from uh, an, uh, zero to 100, and then 100 to 100, and then 100 to 150. So um, let's do that. All right. So the way I like to do this is I want to say I want to go from negative 50 degrees as a solid to zero degrees as a solid. Now I'm going to use the equation Q is equal to MC delta T. And what was our mass in that problem? I don't remember. I don't either. 200 grams. 200 grams. So those will be 200 grams. Now this is the, going to be the specific heat of ice. Mm -hmm. Now these will be given in the problems. but um, 2.1 joules over gram degree Celsius. 2.1 joules per gram degree Celsius. And the change in temperature is 50 degrees. And that comes out to what, Mr. Smith? 21,000 joules. 21,000 joules. Now what I'd like to do right away at this stage is just call that 21 kilojoules. I think it's better to work in kilojoules. Then I'm going to go from 0 degrees as a solid to 0 degrees as a liquid. We're going to melt the uh, ice. Yep. And you're going to use the equation delta H F times, is it an N or N? Um, I have the value in kilojoules per mole. So we're so going to have to. N. Now, since we have, so we have to do sort of a, a pre-step here. If I have 200 grams, mm -hmm. I need to convert that to moles. Yep. So there are 18 grams in water yep. in one mole. If it's a different substance, of course, you have a different molar mass. 11.1. This is 11.1 .1 moles. So I'm going to use that over here. So this is going to be, now the heat of fusion would be given. 6.02 kilojoules per mole. Kilojoules per mole times 11.1 moles. 
Moles can't so you get kilojoules. What do you get there, Mr. Uh, we got 66.9. 66.9 kilojoules. Now, something to make a note of, guys. That took 66 joules. This took 21 joules. Um, melting takes a lot of energy. It does. Breaking and up boiling's the bonds, even worse. Boiling's a lot worse, yeah. Then we go from 0 degrees as a uh, liquid to 100 degrees as a liquid. And we'll use the equation M C delta T. I don't really need this one. I know it's going to be 200 grams. 220? 200. 200. Times 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. I won't write that down. And then we're going to 100 degree change, so that's going to be 100 degrees. That's going to give us a big number. Yeah, it's uh, 83.6 kilojoules. 83,600 joules. Yep. That's what your calculator says. Mm -hmm. Or 83.6 kilojoules. All right. All right. We aren't done yet. Then we have to go from 100 degrees as a liquid to 100 degrees as a gas. Yep. We'll use the equation delta H vaporization times n. The heat of vaporization of water is like 40 it's something. It's 40.7. Right? 40.7 kilojoules per mole. Kilojoules per mole, and our moles were 11.1, 11 .1, just like where they were just a minute ago. Yep. So this is going to be like 452. 452 kilojoules. kilojoules. Now that's huge. Kilojoules. That's a lot compared to the others. And lastly, this is a long problem. 100 degrees as a gas, as steam, mm -hmm. to 100 and oops, 50 degrees as a gas. So that'll be MC delta T which will be 200 grams. Now the specific heat of steam is not the same 2. as water. 2.0. So it's 2.0 times uh, 50 degrees. And this gives us how many joules? 60,000 joules. 60,000 joules, which of course is just 60 kilojoules. Now I just need to add up all my numbers. I have 452 plus 60 plus previous screen 83.6 plus 66.9 plus 21. We get 683.5. 684. Yeah, probably just go with uh, 684 kilojoules. Okay? Yeah. That was a long problem, but you could be expected to, to, to do that. Now, oh, yeah. something that's intriguing to me in my brain about this whole deal is this 452 number. Uh, what is 452 divided by? 452 divided by 684 gives me 66%. What? 66% that, of your energy was used to boil the water. Wow. So, a lot. And that's because you, what you're doing is what's going on. Let's well, kind of go back to that Breaking up the hydrogen bonds. Those yeah. are really strong. You see, if you think of this, is you've got water molecules and they're connected together, little uh, Mickey Mouse guys. And when they're in steam, the water molecules are totally separated. Where here, they're kind of loosely connected by those hydrogen bonds. So breaking the hydrogen bonds takes a lot of energy. It does. So that's kind of the point of that. Okay.